Hello and welcome to another episode of Casting Views, a podcast that takes a topic each week and, as the name suggests, cast views. I've got to say to you, mystery guest, that this will go out in a few weeks. It's definitely one of my first ones in the new year. So to land you at the start of the year is brilliant. I've got Leo Allen returning. Hi, Leo. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. You know, the funny thing about Happy New Year, I was watching a comedian the other night and he opened up saying Happy New Year. He said, you know, I say Happy New Year to people every day. He says, "Uh, I don't understand why is it just January 1st? He said last year. There was today, last year too. So every day is New Year's Day. <laughs> so he, he says, every day I tell people Happy New Year because today is happy is a new year. <laughs> well, I'm actually on a, well, I say like a little mini break at the moment, but I've got some episodes where I've guessed it going out. So I don't know at the moment if this will be the first new episode back. If it's not, it's going to be towards the middle end of, January so people are probably going to get annoyed with us saying happy new year because they probably just got through that because you know there's that whole what is acceptable period of time to say happy new year (laughs) well first time you see someone I mean what if that's August well that's what uh, my colleague was saying today he said um he said I'll see people in June and it'll be the first time I've seen them for the year and I'll tell them happy new year and they look confused and he's like it's still New Year's the first time. <laughs> it's Merry the first Christmas time I'm seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I've got you back. I'm really looking forward to this. So I approached you a little actually it was probably just after we did our last episode, which was time travel. And I said, Yeah, going into the new year, I think I'd like to look at different aspects of technology and where it's at and where we think it's gonna go. And we're gonna start off with AI. Everybody's so, favorite. Yeah. And it just feels like it. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking about like a quarterback or a striker football team. It's had a big year. 23 was a big year for AI, wasn't it? <laughs> it has In had terms a, of the wider populace. Yeah. It has had a huge commercial success. I will say that. Yeah. 2023 was AI's year. <laughs> it had yeah, a Taylor we, Swift year. Yeah. Yeah, so what's 2024 uh, hold hold for it? That's what we're going to discuss. But before we do, I've got two two messages, actually. One, just before recording, I was talking to mutual friend Josh Wilson. He made it absolutely clear I've got to say hello to you and, and mention him. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm in trouble. So, um, And I hear your name crop up a lot on his podcast. <laughs> yeah i like the wilsons i love their show i really do i i find that josh and i have a lot in common we're i think i think it's the age thing i think we're kind of around in the same group <laughs> so a lot of things he'll complain about i'm like yeah i know grumpy old man i i that upsets me too <laughs> so there you go josh you got your mention i said hello to leo for you right <laughs> and hi amanda <laughs> yeah yeah hi amanda yeah absolutely yeah, so before we get stuck into it, we're going to hear a short message from Decaying with the Boys with Matt and my new bestest friend. If if he's listening, he, yeah, I can absolutely certify that you from are my bestest Jojo friend. From the Jojatorium. <laughs> from the yeah, Jojatorium. <laughs> Here's Matt and Adam. Welcome back to Jojatorium. You know who it is. Whoa, 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 it's- Matt. This isn't an episode. This is our promo. Well, what's the promo? Just to tell everybody about our podcast, Decay with the Boys. Oh, where you and I get together and talk about craft beer and combat sports and horror movies and whatever else is on our mind? Yeah, from buckle to bell, we cover the best combat news in the biz. Oh, yeah, we do do that, don't we? Yeah, every week. Yeah, and you can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Good Pods, and on YouTube. We're at GameWTV on all social media. So catch us out there and have a beer with us. Cheers. Right, we are back. So, I guess... The first thing we should get out of the way is what is or what the definition of AI is. So in your head, do you have a a simple put, this is what it says on the tin? That whole term AI has been, I think it's been broadened over the past year or so. um, Because it, what's fun, it's fascinating to me that people are looking at it like it's new. It's not really new. Machine learning has been around for literally as long as the computer has been around. Um, so 
AI is essentially it's machine learning, but uh, being able to adapt by extrapolating information that was fed into it and the way the current state of AI is, um, the goal has been to kind of put things in a, a human readable format that's more conversational. That's the new AI that we're seeing. That's why people are so in love with things like ChatGPT, because it's not just a Google search that gives you results. It's actually saying stuff to you in a way that it's, uh, it seems like you're having a conversation with someone. So that's, in a nutshell, that's AI. Yeah, I had to look at a couple of, because I cheat, so I look at the internet. So I didn't <laughs> actually ask AI, because I was wondering if I might break the system. But I had to look to what see what... What are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I did. I did ask it that, and it says I don't have feelings, and I kept trying, but it just wouldn't. It wouldn't break. <laughs> I'm going to come on to a little conversation I did have with AI later. So I've got. I think the the classic definition was or is a machine's ability to perform cognitive functions we associate with human minds. And yeah. I did have. I pulled out uh, an interesting one from John McCarthy. So that must have been back in the fifties or so. Uh, the science and engineering of making intelligent machines, especially intelligent computer programs. I mean, which is the same now. But to hit on a point you said about it's been around for a while, it is it is fascinating. So I'm not going to go into all the details, but I had some key dates here. And 1950 was the mm. year that kind of AI first started being discussed. So, you know, we're looking at, at, at what, 70 years ago. So just absolutely like you said. And I think it was brought up by Alan Turing. He invented, obviously, you've got the Turing test to see if a computer can... Which I, I have a gripe about the way people are using the Turing test. Okay, go on. What that is and the way people are applying it is not the same thing. So there was this quote-unquote shocking article that came out that said, chat GPT has passed the Turing test. Does that mean it's conscious? That's not even what the Turing test is about. It is not about proving whether or not a system is conscious or sentient or anything like that. It is just to say that it can provide a conversation, a feedback to you in a manner that if you're just a person reading it or interacting with it, you wouldn't be able to tell whether or not you're talking to a machine. Yeah. That's not a sign of consciousness. That's not yeah. what Turing was trying to prove. That's not what his tests were for. That he, he did lectures, and none of his lectures had anything to do with our machines conscious. That's not what he was talking about. So people, just because an AI passes the Turing test and chat GPT is not the first one to do it, that doesn't mean it's conscious. It just means that it's good at providing feedback in a way that if you just saw it or if you were listening or interacting with it, you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't be able to tell whether or not I was a human. So imagine if you're on a website, a shopping website, and you know they all have that little chat bubble that pops up now. How may we help you? That's a chat bot. Imagine if that chat bot was so good at conversation, you could have sworn you're talking to someone, a real person. That's passing the Turing test. But that does not mean it's intelligent. It just means it's good. No, and, and that's the thing. And there is, absolutely, there are so many things in, in everyday life and, and, and science. It, it's the application of a set of rules and how you interpret that. That is fundamentally the be all and end all, isn't it? It's like if you take a set of rules and you apply it and you're slightly looser than I am with it, then what right. we're getting are two separate readings, right? Right, right. I think the real, and I might be getting ahead of our discussion, I think the real test of AI as to whether or not you can start to question whether or not it's conscious is something that just happened recently. And I can't remember the name of the company, but I heard I was listening to uh, one of my favorite tech podcasts and they were talking about it where they announced that they presented their AI with a problem and it came up with a solution but not with any pre-existing information that was fed to it. It solved a problem on its own, basically. Now, whether or not that's true yet, I don't know. I don't know if it's been proven whether or not 
because you know these companies they all love to say ours is so smart now so yeah. this is like the next level because if an ai can do that without depending on any models that was previously fed to it if it's just problem solving on its own you now you might start getting into thinking about is it conscious that i could start saying i could see that questioning but if it's just spitting out <laughs> nicely formed term papers based on information that it's basically googling that's not intelligence that's just speed and people often confuse speed with intelligence these computers aren't intelligent they're just very 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 fast and this is it right so okay we're, we're getting right into the the meat of it already so for me and, and I don't mean to do a disservice, although these centers will probably sound like it. You kind of almost said how I feel about things like ChatGPT at the moment. That it just feels like a nicer presented and quicker version of Google yeah. at the moment. I, I ask it a question and it will present nicely, you know, about 10 bullet points. And it will say, hi there, you know, yep, certainly have a look at this. But remember, when you're doing this, things may have changed. It's just going off and scouring the net, right? Yeah. And things that have been fed to it you know the the models so which is fine and all but i just want people to stop confusing that with intelligence or consciousness that's not. yeah because <laughs> because absolutely like you said if it is problem solving on its own that is a game changer in in the sense of the next step the next milestone right right if it's true i haven't had a time had a chance yet to really dive into this story but it it's somebody's claiming their their ai did it it solved a problem without any of the, uh, you know, based on any of the model information that was fed to it. And it's also interesting what you're saying about the chatbots, you see. I mean, I think it's pretty clear when when you're talking to one of these at the moment still that if it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. a, if it's a bot or not. I mean, yeah, we haven't got around or, or we don't seem to have improved that or at least some of the websites I've been on, which makes it sound dodgy, but no, no, no dodgy website. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on swiftly. But there was something that did the rounds a little while ago, a video clip that went viral about an audio call from one of these chat systems where it was trying to book a, a mechanics appointment, I think, or a service for oh, a car. Oh, that's, that's Google. Was it, was it Google? And yeah, that, that was been... really pretty good, but it was just the long gaps, wasn't it? While it was processing its, its response. Well, Google's been criticized about this because they announced that I could have sworn it was probably 2019 um, maybe, maybe, as, yeah. as one of the new assistant things. Cause, and now full disclosure, and I tell people this all the time. Yes, I am in bed with Google. Google runs my life. <laughs> I only buy Pixel phones. All of my gadgets are my, you know, Google stuff, Google, Google, Google. And, you know, well, I'm Pixel all Android. Because of you, by the way. I've, it's the first time I left the the other the other brand. I've got I've got Pixel for the first time because of you. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, it 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 um it changed my mind about how I felt about the way Apple was. I'm like, man, you're just stuck in their ecosystem. Well, having things in one ecosystem actually is advantageous because uh, you don't have different devices scattered all over. Yeah. At least you got this one ecosystem that you deal with. But the difference is with Android and Google, you're not locked in. Like you can use stuff outside. Anyway, that's a different conversation. And I don't want to be anti-Apple tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what you were talking about booking appointments, that was something they did at a um, at one of the Google IOs. I think it was 2019. And they demonstrated where it would call a restaurant and yeah. book reservations for you. And it was really good, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, the problem is that never really you know, they kind of just slowly stopped talking about it. Apparently, there were a lot of challenges because you, you have to be able to get restaurants and, like you said, service stations on board with accepting this because I think it may have gotten hung up on a few times. or, But it, it's slowly but surely, I guess there's a few places that will accept the calls and will do it. Um, but the one thing that Google has done this year that I don't know if a lot of people have noticed or if you've noticed so Google does an excellent job on the Pixel phones with preventing spam calls with that call yes. screening feature. Yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. this made yeah. my life so much better. Over the years, I've fed that thing so much that I don't even get spam calls anymore. But the ones that do slip through, 
it answers for you and it talks to the person on the other end. Have you ever listened to it? Because when you see those no, calls, I haven't you... done that bit. I've seen it flag up as saying potential spam call when a number's coming in. And but you can I've not not done gone that next step then, yeah. Yeah, you can have an answer and it'll talk to the person on the other end and you can see it in real time and it keeps a transcript of that. And you can tell it to ask, well, who is this? You know, tell me more, blah, 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 blah. Well, the thing they did this year, which is pretty incredible, is they've um, they've reworked that voice. So it doesn't sound so mechanical anymore. Right. It literally sounds like a real person talking. So it'll say, hello, this the person you're trying to reach is using a, uh, what is it, a, a screening platform from Google or something like that. But it really sounds very, very natural now. And I was like, well, kudos to Google because the previous one is, was a little put offish, but, but now it, it just sounds like a person and they're doing a great job at that. That's the kind of AI that I like is the kind that has a practical everyday purpose, such as throwing spam in the ditch where it belongs. <laughs> Because isn't that the key thing for wider acceptance is one of a better term naturalness of the AI? Because like you said, it's up till now, it's been quite mechanical and it's missed that humanness of either a little pause or a sigh or a, a reaction to what's been said. It, it's very. Yeah, just you know, very. Gen Hi, you are reaching that, yeah, that robotic yeah. sound. Let me see if I can pull one of these up. Let me let, let me see. Yeah, I think I have one. Let's see if you can hear it. Hi, I am a Google virtual assistant recording this call for the person you're trying to reach. Before I try to... But the person hung up with... Well, got there. There. Yeah, that's, but that's, it that's sounds really so good. much yeah. like a real yeah. person now. And I was really pretty impressed. So, And, you know, going where my mind's going now, the potential for bad or, or like catching people out now with, with some of these things is going to multiply exponentially as well now though, right? What do you mean? So for the, the scammers, potentially, you know, we, we know that they're just dialing people up. So now if they know they can just dial multiple people and yeah. have a, a natural human sounding voice like that at the end of it, it might, it, it, like we said, you can identify these mechanical things or, or if it's not a human straight away. But potentially when you have something natural sounding as just that little snippet you, you played then, the potential to, to trick people, I think, goes up massively. How would they trick you if you're screening the call? Well, if you're screening the call, but if it's going to, quote, landlines. Oh, uh, Dan, Dan, who who has landlines in 2023? <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah. Grandma. That's, that's a point. That's a point. But but, but I still do hear, like, on the, on the consumer program I listen to, people are just still so so willing to be, gullible and vulnerable to people that call them up and i'm now just thinking if if somebody doesn't even have to have 20 people dialing numbers they can just have a, an ai program calling up massively. well there there is something you need to know about that um there aren't 20 people calling these numbers it literally there's software that just generates oh, yeah, phone yeah. numbers and they're just calling it just pokes and pokes and pokes and pokes and pokes um and that, I mean, I get what you're saying. Yeah, people with landlines. And then there's the whole, I don't know if this is a problem over there, but lately here, there's been a huge problem with um, people capturing your voice and using AI to place a call to you. So for example, let me, let me back up here. So what has been happening is there's fake kidnapping calls. And so people will get a call right. from their daughter, help mom, you know, blah, 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 so-and-so, you need to send this money here. And, yeah, and it sounds exactly like your, your loved one. And so now they're telling people, well, this is what you need to do to get around that. Because it's gotten so good, just like what I did with that, that phone call, that uh, transcript from Google, that there's tools that they can just capture you saying a word and then recreate your voice saying whatever. That's incredible. It's That's scary. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, there's been a few people on the news here who've, who've, uh, they've had it happen and they'll play back, you know, what, what was heard on their phone. And 
it's sure enough, it, it would sound like their daughter or their wife or whatever sound just like them, but it's not them. Because criminals always find a way to ruin everything for everybody. <laughs> they, they certainly <laughs> do. I mean, they are very inventive and very creative, but yeah. yeah. Use it for good, people. Use it for good. But this is what I was going to say. So, well, I've got two things about people's reactions. So at the moment, well, especially over here, we've seen, even in the news now, stories about, you know, is AI a good thing or a bad thing? It's going to take over. We're going to lose the jobs, this and that, right? Put some of that bit aside for now. Like we've said, AI, and there are some things I'll come to later, Technically, it's been in and around. There was a program written in 1959. It hit the big time kind of in the 90s as well, 80s and 90s, where we had, um, was it Deep Blue, the chess program? Yes. We've been using, like you said, AI has been in, embedded in websites and potentially phone calls and in businesses for a number of years. So it's it's not new. It's new to person at home, sort of Joe Public. So yeah, as with any kind of technology, do we think this is what, the, the issue is it's about when it makes its way into the hands of the ordinary person and what they do with it or how they perceive it. And that's the issue rather than it being something scary. Because like I said, we, we've had it around in some form for 40 years at least. Right, right. Um, and it's just, um, I think whenever technology accelerates at the rate that AI is right now, it terrifies people. And for good reason, in some circumstances, like the one I just described. Um, but so some people will say, well, we need to stop working on it. And I think that's the the wrong reaction. You, It's that whole situation where you've already opened Pandora's box. And if you don't take control of what's coming out of that box, someone someone else will. And typically that other person who will take control of what's coming out of that box We'll do it for nefarious purposes. So we can't just sit back and say, hey, we need to stop developing this. I don't know about there, but here we have a lot of politicians, especially, who will say, we need to rein this in. We need to, you know, pass legislation to stop the development of AI. No, that would be the absolute dumbest thing you ever did. You don't want to stop because now, like I said, if you do, now the bad people will just con continue to accelerate development for their bad purposes, where we can continue to develop to counter all the bad stuff and to continue to go build tools for good purposes. Nobody's then also talking about potentially the increase in jobs, you know, the creation of jobs or productivity it may bring about. I mean, the thing is, We've gone through, as as a species, we've gone through so many iterations or periods of change in both technology and wider that it's just we are, we are now entering one of those state phases. And, and you, yeah, look at history. Doesn't that always happen? As soon as something new comes out, especially a, a productivity tool, that's the first thing people say. It's going to take our jobs. I remember in the 80s when they first started developing robots to work on the assembly lines at car manufacturers. I mean, there were huge protests. There was vandalism against these robots because it was the same thing. They're going to take all the jobs. And then the cooler heads prevailed and told them, no, if anything, it will help create new jobs and get you off of the assembly line killing yourself. We'll train you to do the job behind the robot. And that's the thing that people often can't see is like, no, it's not going to take your job. And that's really what the purpose of, of technology in general is. It's to help humans, not to replace humans. And you're always going to need humans. I don't care what anyone says. AI is not going to replace humans. It makes for a great science fiction story. Yes, I love those movies. Not the creator, though. Have you seen that yet? <sighs> no, no, not yet. <laughs> Very dis disappointing, disappointing, in my opinion. It's a beautiful movie, though. It's the visuals are amazing and stunning, but the story is meh. But, uh, but yeah, that's the whole purpose of technology is to, you know, stop us from doing these remedial jobs so that we can concentrate on the bigger stuff and continue to move mankind forward. I mean, that's the same thing we did with machinery. 
people are like, oh my gosh, it's gonna over, it's gonna take all the jobs. No, you had to train people in new jobs to operate the machinery. Well, well, that's it. We were joking about something before we pressed record, and I, and I was saying about oh, pen and paper, bring bring back the days of pen and paper. That was that was far better. But that that's exactly it. I'm sure when computers were coming in and and everything was being made digital, people were going to say computers are going to end everything. No, we've got more jobs because we need people supporting the IT and the infrastructure, and then <laughs> right. that that breeds off new uh, products and and services and. And I haven't got it here, but I did see that, you know, there are a lot of reports saying that it is going to create more job than it eliminates. Because as we've seen, and, and as you've mentioned, as as things progress, it's just adapting, isn't it? It's It might displace jobs, but again, that's always going to happen. When when the car came in, it probably got rid of a lot of the, the, the horses probably didn't have to do as much <laughs> as, as they were there doing were previously. Protests, there were yeah. protests about that, about getting rid of the horses because of cars. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, this isn't yeah. new, people. We're just going in cycles. Life goes in cycles, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, and and I think it's just it, yeah, it's just that fear, isn't it, of of when it go gets into Joe Public's hand that they don't realize they've been living with something from for, for so long. I mean, you you'll bet that the way it's being used and probably what it can do in in the medical world. I know we spoke about sort of medical uh, things a couple of episodes ago that you're on. People will be wanting AI to be fully embedded into the kind of medical world because of what it can and can't potentially do. I mean, I think I've already seen that it is used a lot in cancer detection and reviewing sort of tumors at that micro level on on scans and x-rays. And Right, right. And that can run 24-7, right? Yeah, all day, every day. Well, here's the problem. There are two major problems. The media, of course, and the big... AI companies themselves, like OpenAI, who creates ChatGPT. Now, here's the issue that they run into is the same issue that everyone runs into. Okay, we're building this stuff. We're building this stuff. But to continue, we need money. So what do they do to generate money? Well, they got to create something in a way that average, like you said, the average Joe is willing to pay for. So they build up this big story about, Oh my gosh, ChatGPT is so great. It can write anything for you and it can do all these things for you. All you have to do is pay $20 a month to get the full benefit of what it can do. And people jumped on board and understandably, you know, I get it. But to me, that, the, that creates the problem of now a huge portion of society only sees AI as that. They think that's all it does is it writes papers that you can potentially use to cheat or it creates these cute little pictures with image generation. There's far still can't more get hands to... right, it seems like. <laughs> it still like... can't do hands. The fingers are always. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's kind of what frustrates me about the whole conversation around AI is because that's what general society knows because that was what was presented to them. And in my opinion, it was presented to them on purpose because if you look at the revenue, revenue that's being generated from AI now, it's these image generation software platforms. Yeah. It's the chat GPTs and whatnot that can write papers and whatnot. Folks, AI can do, can potentially do far, far more than that. And they're actually working on far greater things that a lot of people don't even realize. And people are freaking out because they're seeing this thing having conversations with them and they think, oh my gosh, it's intelligent. The end is here, it's Terminator. That's not even scratching the surface of what's real, what real AI is about. It's not writing your papers, folks, and it's not creating your cute little pictures. And I would still argue if you think it's right in your papers, you've still got to do the work to double check it. Because, you do uh, more work. <laughs> you end up yeah. doing more work. You well, might as well have just done it yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as a side note, I appeared on another podcast many months back, and it was a film review one. Just out of curiosity, this was when I was just getting into ChatGPT and all that and, and it being available. And I, I asked it to give me the plot of this film. Started off brilliant, but about halfway, it made its own ending up. That's called AI, AI hallucination. 
Yeah. And if I hadn't seen it, and I, you know, I was relying on that. It it would have been an incredible egg on my face because it just. It, I mean, I actually preferred the ending it did to the film, the film itself. So maybe <laughs> that's it's it's a, it's the harshest critic. But I guess yeah, I guess what what I'm tr- what, what I want to say is 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 you're right. The feels like what we've got at the moment isn't. I think it's it's either astounding people because people are saying, "Oh look, I can ask it something and it's doing this," and. I think the image generation in particular is something quite special. Now, I've got a friend who works for a company where they're investing in AI. So he's got an, he's got an um, he he gets a free subscription to like the full package, and some of the things are brilliant. It is really good, but for the majority of people, it's either going to be I'm going to ask it a question and look, it's answered me. That's brilliant, or they're going to be nonplussed by it because it isn't particularly great. Because yeah, like I said, you ask it. To, to summarize something up and it's going to get it wrong and so they'll dismiss it as being rubbish already whereas like you said it's you know i've got it here it's done cancer uh, analysis it's got movement analysis so it's looking at neurological and musculoskeletal diseases such as oncoming strokes balance and gait problems can be detected things like this are going to revolutionize if not already the medical world and and, and people as such and this is what the true ai is doing in the background while you're asking well, why I asked ChatGPT, were Oasis going to reform? That, that's the extent <laughs> of my... <laughs> yeah, And it didn't I give mean, me good news there either. But... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, now, I will call you the task on a word you used there with the image Ooh. generation. You said special. And it's funny you say that because I just posted about this over on Blue Sky, which, by the way, that's pretty much where I live on social, as far as social media goes, I'm only on blue sky. Um, I, I see these things almost every day now. Uh, you know, when you're in your Instagram feed or whatever, and you see ads more and more, I can see all of these ads are starting to become these AI generated images. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. I get it. But they all look the same. It can be completely different companies, but the look, the feel is the same. Um, So there are people who started calling, you know, they would make these images and they call it AI art. So what I was challenging people with is that this is not art. It's image generation. And the reason why it's not art is because it's not special. It's not special because literally anyone can do it. Anyone can take the same prompts that you put in and put feed them into the same AI tool that you put in that you fed it to and get the same almost exact same results and they all have that same look and feel to them what makes art art is the fact that it's special and it's unique you can't I don't know Dan maybe you are this talented but I can't the majority of us can't the majority of us can't look at a Picasso and then immediately recreate it. That's what makes art special. It's not typing in prompts. Now I know people think I'm that that may sound like I'm poo pooing AI, which I'm not, but I am kind of getting sick and tired of the image generation stuff. And I'm sick of people calling it art because it's not art. It's image generation. I'll give you, just just call it what it is because it's not special. What I will do is just to defend myself, when I say special, sorry, what I meant is that, again, to a horrible term, but the normal person, Joe Public, I, I could see they would think that's something fun and interesting because that is something fairly new. Because as we said, ChatGBT could be comparable to a Google a search engine, but mm. for someone to put in, I want to draw... I want Santa dressed as a, as a biker who, you know, sort of taking on a gang of robots or something and, and getting an image fairly like that is something that most people wouldn't have been able to see before. And it's, I think it's a fun element of it. I think it's a fun element, but like you said, they've all got that, still got that cartoony sheen to it for want of a better word, very shiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can tell it's AI generated. A couple of weeks ago, I was in London and it was actually a really interesting mix of art and tech. It's an event called Frameless where they had different rooms, but for example, one room you would go in and the entire, it was like almost like a warehouse unit. The entire room was just filled with artworks from Picasso, Monet, et cetera. And it was then being animated as well. So I guess you're using a bit of technology to do that. 
Oh, I've the heard artwork of this, actually. itself, yeah. yeah, is just stunning to look at. And for me, what makes art is the person and the story behind it. Now, at some point, AI is going to be good enough to recreate, like you said, Picasso. But there's no story behind it other than person A has put in parameter B into right. computer and yet yeah, parameters A, B, and C, sorry, into a computer, and and that's the end result. Or like if we were to do it for music, not that that song has come from a group of kids playing in their it's sort of like their mate's garage for 10 years and then playing the pubs and the clubs and then mm. then hitting that big time it's and maybe i'm being overly sentimental or old man about this oh me too art, and i admit yeah, it it's yeah, a story yeah. yeah 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 there's like i said that's what makes it special is it's the people who it's the people or person that actually worked on it and knowing that not anyone can just go out and recreate it yeah, and just before people are shouting at me, and I'm not saying that people who make music or art with technology, it's I it's use not technology art. to make music. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying that that is music because I still couldn't do it. Right, right. What I'm saying is, yeah, like you said, the pure AI at the moment, image generation. Yeah, it isn't art. It's just asking something to return something, and that and that's what it is. It's and and you you keep touching on something too that I try to remind myself of like you say you know the average Joe public this is amazing to them which I do appreciate that because not everyone is into technology a lot of this stuff is the first time anyone even bothered believe it or not there are still people in the world today 2024 who don't really touch a computer but then something like this comes around and they hear about it on the news and they see it, they go, well, I'm gonna go check it out. And they do. And their minds are blown. And I can imagine, you know, if, if I was in that same situation, I, my mind would be blown too. I can appreciate that, that that's, and it's, it's really the majority of people, a lot of, you know, the people that are really clamoring about this stuff, they've never really fully had to do anything on a computer outside of what they do for work. So to get a hold of something like this, it's absolutely incredible to them. And that's great and all. But I'm just, you know, I've <laughs> I've been on this um I've been on this mission, I think it I think it's my mission because I've been on it for over a year now to try to talk people down off of the ledge of AI, what it is, what it actually is what it can and cannot do and what the real smart people are doing with it. So, and that's why I keep talking about this stuff is I want people to understand it's not really what you're hearing in the media. Yeah. The word prompts for term papers and pictures. That's not really the important part of AI. That's not the important work. That's the capitalist side. That's the side where they're making money off of you for doing those things. They're making money off of you because you're paying a subscription if you want to use it to the fullest. Yeah, that, yeah that's the home version that they've allowed you to have as well. <laughs> right, yeah. right. I know I keep repeating this statement again, but it is the fact that you have lived with it. So these people that feel, I mean, even, are we saying like things like Netflix and and other streaming services, the, the whole recommendation thing, that, that is AI to a, to a sort, isn't it? You know, the, yes, you watch this, it is you like this. absolutely AI. I love how people jump on terms when they hit the media. Algorithm. Remember, people started clamoring about the algorithm, the algorithm. Algorithms are AI. They're, they're actually one of the fundamental bases of what makes an, uh, an AI function. You know, you've lived with the, for you, or you might like these on, on every website or streaming service that you're a member of. So you know, it's not a bad thing. Right. It's been around and it's just where it's going to go. Some people don't like that though, like targeted ads. Again, I'll say it again on this show. I love targeted ads. I am a proponent for targeted ads. Why? Because people freak out. They go, Oh, it's creepy that it, it just knows what I, you know, it's watching me or that's my privacy. First of all, that has nothing to do with privacy. You're on the internet. Stop thinking about privacy. As soon as you jump on the internet, stop thinking about privacy. Targeted ads are beautiful because now I see ads for things I actually am interested in and mm -hmm. I don't see ads for tampons. 
That has nothing to do with me. I don't need to see those ads. I need to see the ads for things that I like. And yes, the algorithms do that. And thank you to the brilliant people who have made it so efficient to this day. <laughs> we just need that algorithm to keep putting casting views into people's uh, interviews. That's, that's what I'm waiting for. But no, you're right. You're going to get ads, right? So wouldn't you want them to be targeted rather than something right? completely random? I mean, exactly. the, the question is, I'd rather not have ads, but if I'm going to have an ad, I want it to be at of something. At least that, make them yeah. relevant to me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there are certain sites that do it really well. TikTok feels like it's great at really narrowing in on if you've spent oh, more than TikTok 30 seconds looking at a video. A jogger not at that. I think it's five seconds. I've, I've been trying to, uh, <laughs> to research how it knows and how quickly it knows. I, I know there's probably a way to find out. I think it's five seconds. Literally, Dan, because I'm a nerd, I've actually done this. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to say I've actually timed myself looking at something on TikTok and I start it with 60 seconds. Okay. If I look at something for 60 seconds, I know eventually I'm going to see something similar come back around on yeah. TikTok. Yeah. Okay. So then I cut it down to 30 seconds. Same thing. 30 seconds. I know it's going to come back around 15 seconds. I know it's going to come back around. I got down to 10. It started getting a little spaced out. You know, little, the, the, the topic didn't come around as quickly, but I think it's five seconds. If you watch something for more than for five seconds or more on TikTok, you're more than likely going to see that same type of thing come around again. That's how brilliant TikTok's algorithm is. It's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, it's too good. I don't know how to untrain it, it because I've got so my my TikTok is basically it's just people going around predominantly London getting burgers, <laughs> trying to find the best burger, and it's these food. It's these food. I will put quotes critics. What happened was the other day they were talking about this one lad. He's again, he's a British lad. It seems like he's become famous because he only chews his food twice and then swallows. And I, I looked at one of his videos oh. and, and now I keep getting all these videos <laughs> and it's annoying me because I'm not, you know, fair play to him. I'm not saying that, but it's like, I, I want to see people that are actually going out and I'm finding places to go eat. When you watch the first one, how about how long was the video? Oh, well, the video, I may have even watched it a couple of times because, you know, sometimes <laughs> they go so fast and I'm like, D you know, did he actually do that? And oh, I was thinking, yeah. and, and that's the problem now. And now, and, and, you know, the weirdest thing, he's now so, there are two or three of these food people that I follow. He's now appearing in their videos. And I was thinking, did I make that happen? <laughs> has, TikTok, has, has he actually met them? Uh, has TikTok merged these people together? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You spent too much time on it, Dan. I told you. Yeah. If you spend, a, if you watch a video to its entirety, you're going to see similar content. That's a guarantee. So that's why I did one minute, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, down to five seconds. So if, it, if you watch it for five seconds, you, more, like I said, you, you will likely see that content again, but it will be longer later on. But yeah, if you sit and watch something all the way through, oh, you're getting fed that again, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Facebook, I, I tend not, I don't really use Facebook much anymore, but that also felt really good that if you're Googling something or looking at a particular product, every other advert would then seem to be around that as well. So it's not as in your face, I think, as TikTok because you've got posts and stuff in between. But it felt like Facebook also were, were fairly good at narrowing in on Google searches well, or even conversations potentially. I'm glad you brought that up because there is still this plug in. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head now, but I'll send it to you later. There is this Google Chrome plug in that I got several years ago, and I don't even remember how I found it. But what it does is it runs in the background. The little icon looks like a thumbs down. The the face, you know, okay. like it's the yeah. Facebook icon, but thumbs down. Yeah. What it does is in the background, it says, wouldn't you like to more, wouldn't you like to know more about? And it just keeps randomly generating words over okay. and over again. And what that does is it throws off Facebook's algorithm because it doesn't know anymore what it is that you're actually trying to look at. 
because it thinks it's you searching for something. The way this plugin is set up, it's like right. you're searching for these random things, right. but it it changes so quickly. So that, and the person that built this plugin, that was their point. They were like, I, if I look at something, I don't want Facebook to keep showing me that same thing over and over again. So this plugin is just randomly generating topics over and over again. So your Facebook feed never quote unquote latches on to anything you may be interested in. I'll send that, it to you. That's yeah, it, it's, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, genius. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and, it, and of course that spills over into your app. So if you don't ever get on Facebook online, that's fine, but you just keep this plugin running because you know how Facebook is. If you log in somewhere, you're always logged in there yes, <laughs> as yeah, far yeah, as Facebook yeah. is concerned. Yeah. So yeah, I've had that plugin running. I swear it's been about four years now and it's still there on my Google Chrome. Um, so I'll send it to you. It was absolutely genius. And that's the thing. And it, it's just to show that there is, as with anything, it is the application of the technology or the, the theory. Cause like we said, I, I think going from TikTok being probably the best one I've seen to, like I said, having some really funny hit and miss responses from chat GPT, which is, is the, <laughs> you know, the most commonly mentioned one now. I did have, like I said, I think what is what is good about it is, like like we were saying, it's brought to people a nice, friendly interface for the web. Mm -hmm. I think it's almost like a new new front end for it because I did, like I said, I did have a conversation with it. I, I just thought I'd have a bit of fun, and I asked them, I asked it if Oasis would reform, and it said, look, you know, I, I, it doesn't look lightly <laughs> because of an argument, but just even if they don't, <laughs> they said never say never, but even if they don't. Oh, no, 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 it said probably not because of the, the relationship between the brothers. And I said, oh, that makes me sad. And it said, you know, look, even if they don't get together, the music that they've created both together and individually is still out there to enjoy and music is yeah. great. And yeah. I kind of said, oh, thank side, you. Dan. Yeah, and I said, look, thank you for making me feel better. And it says, oh, no problem. I'm here anytime. So <laughs> the, the fact that you've kind of got that there is is kind of, but for a lot of people, that's going to be fun and it might be for for the shiny new toy for half an hour that they play with. But do we think, though, that just that kind of thing, that you could, in theory, have a conversation with it, that there might be in the future with the home use of it, like I said, goes up exponentially, that there could be that loss of connection maybe with other people. Do we think that there is a, a scenario where people may rely more on AI around them in their their own house like smart connected house then and maybe lose touch with people potentially you, you know uh, it's extreme. I'm so, it's extreme. I'm so, no it's not extreme i'm so glad you said that and earlier we were talking about our mutual friend josh wilson on an, one of their episodes he talked about this very thing he said that and i was like i agree with him 100 percent where Retaining information is easier when you're talking to a human. And I agree with him 100%. And it's funny because my daughter is like that. Uh, she does not like, you know how everyone jumps on, oh, I can just do online classes for college. She does not like that. She's not that kind of learner. She only really learns when she's actually in class and a professor is teaching. She was the same way in, in high school and whatnot. And so I think that's a very important thing that people have to remember. Um, we need, you know, we were, okay, depending on your beliefs, either we were created or we were, we evolved in either, either scenario, we need one another. That's the bottom line. We need to be in communities with each other we need to be with each other and we need to learn from each other and just depending on ai to teach us eh, like i said i agree with josh wilson i and i've noticed that in my own life i'll retain information better if someone talks to me about it versus me just googling something not the generation's time though who knows what what it might look like I but I agree with you. Like Josh said, people are going to be stupider. <laughs> <laughs> because I agree with you. So this year I took a, a three-day course and an examination for work. I've done these before. 
And they've always been, you go to London, you spend three days there with your other classmate from around the country, even the world. This one was online and I passed it, but I found it so difficult because one, I was sitting in front of a computer screen. Two, I would say there was about seven or eight of us, almost to a T, nobody put their camera on. And again, I'm not saying, you know, if you don't put the camera on, but you couldn't then even see faces. It was only the the tutor. And then after a, like the first sort of three, the first day, I then didn't put mine on because I'm like, you know, like, you know <laughs> oh, if, 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 if no one else is. But I just found it difficult because I thought back to the times when I would go to the course in person and in the breaks, you would either ask the tutor a question about something that's been discussed or you'd mix with the other people, you'd network and you ask them about that real life examples because you are learning something from a book the, the way it should be. But you can then talk to us oh, so in your company, how's that done? And kind of you're learning and, and interacting. But on that computer, when it was break time, well, didn't know if people were there because their cameras were off, but you know, everyone was right. going off to make a cup of tea. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, there was that element that I found it really awkward that it was being done online. Now, the counter argument is always, well, I know if it's online, I can always go back to the information. Yeah, that's fine and all. And that's actually supporting what we're saying. You're not really retaining the information. You just know that you can get back to the information when you need it. And I think, I think that's a hindrance to learning. Now, it's funny that I have gotten to this point because, you know, that, that's you, you know, as a person that's always been in technology, like with programming, you know, I taught myself programming, but some of that self-taught was I was still looking at a book that someone actually wrote. It's funny to say that, but realize that, yeah, I think we as humans in general, that's how we learn best is when there's another human or group of humans around and we're all learning together. I mean, look at the power of storytelling. That's why storytelling has always been huge in the human experience because that's how we communicate. Probably someone has that. Well, I'm absolutely households must have done this, but I was just thinking, do we think there are examples where say couples have had a row and they're asking Alexa to pass on information to their partner because they don't want to speak to them. So are we going to use our AI and smart tools intermediaries? <laughs> Can you well. imagine? Yeah. So Alexa, could you tell the could you tell the husband that dinner's on the table? <laughs> no, no, Dad, no. It's it, it happens because so again, I have the Google devices all throughout the house, and my wife will be upstairs. And with Google, you can say broadcast the message, and it'll say, okay, what's the message? And you say the message, and it will broadcast it to all the speakers in the house or one individual speaker. So sometimes my wife will be upstairs. And she'll send me a message and it'll be, hey, can you bring me a cup of water? But it's her voice. But okay, yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah, it already yeah. happens. Like you're saying, that we're already using it. And first of all, the first time she did it, I laughed because I was so proud of her. Because my wife <laughs> does not get along with technology at all. Yeah. But she, yeah. <laughs> she did it. I was like, awesome. You're using it the way it was meant to be used. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, using using it as an intermediary if you had an argument. So there you go. If if you've done that, oh no, not... if it was no, if it's an argument, she's in my face. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's the bottom line. She's not using technology to to call me out. <laughs> oh dear. So, well, anyway, I'm just I'm just looking at the time. I always love speaking to you. Do you know what? I really really do love our, our conversations. Like I said, I just want to keep going back that is with us i know especially like i said in the uk recently there has been and when i say recently i'm talking about towards the end of 2023 there's been a lot of stories in in the news but we've got to remember as you said right back at the start every new innovation is always met with skepticism right it's just the level of what it can do i mean like i said some funny ones were 97 gary kasparov was defeated by deep blue in 2011, I like this one, IBM machine. Watson. Yeah, yeah. I knew you were going to bring up Watson. <laughs> wins at Jeopardy. You go through 2015, there was a supercomputer that used a special kind of deep neural network called a convolutional neural network to identify and categorize images with a higher rate of accuracy than the average human. Now, 
actually on this, do we think it's a terminology used as well? So look at that sentence, deep neural network, a convolutional neural network to identify, you know, do we think it's often this wording and terminology that maybe makes people think that it's something that's going to take yeah, over the world? Because the, you know, if you tell anyone anything and if you use extremely big words, it makes everyone feel that one, you're very intelligent, and two, what you're talking about must be true because you use those big words. Could you imagine <laughs> describing to someone, let's say you fixed uh, the brakes on someone's car, and instead of saying, yeah, I switched out the brake pads, you instead describe the chemical makeup of the pads that were <laughs> yeah. used and how the brake system works using all these technical all this technical jargon now first of all the person will probably roll their eyes at you but in the back of their mind they're like wow dan really knows what he's talking about but you said the same exact thing you just use bigger words <laughs> it's also the words of like neural when you think neural you're thinking brain and you think they're gonna oh, take yeah. you know this it's it is amazing what like you said a few words can do I was watching a program today where it was looking at programs from the 80s and here there was a dating show and I can't remember the exact words but the presenter asked this guy what do you do for a living and he said something like an advanced vision enhanced technician or something and she like, starts laughing and goes yeah I'm a window cleaner basically you exactly. know? <laughs> That's what, that was my point yeah exactly yeah, you're, yeah. you're saying the same thing but you're just using these big words <laughs> yeah yeah and, and then like you said it, it's believable because it's technical but everything is with us, even like you said, right back to start customer service, speech recognition we've had, and it's hit or miss. I mean, the recording platform I'm on, it gives me now a transcript and it's it's not the greatest, but I'm 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 right, guessing right. again the home version is probably different. But speech There's recognition other is, tools that you can apply to that, by the way. Well, is that, we'll get oh, to that later. We'll speak, we'll yeah. speak after you. Yeah. <laughs> But I remember, was it even in the 90s? Was it Dragon or something? There was speech recognition back on the yeah. home PCs years ago. Dragon, so naturally speaking. I worked for a group of radiologists that used that software. As a matter of fact, a lot of medical professionals use Dragon, naturally speaking. Anyone who does any kind of dictation, they use Dragon. Dragon's still around. It's huge, my friend. Very huge. And it works really, really well. It's impressive. I'll give them props. <laughs> I guess, yeah, just to go back to what I'm saying, it's not anything new, I guess, to the world. It might be new to to us and, you know, not, not necessarily self. It might be new to a lot of people at home, but it's just the next evolution of tech, right? Right, exactly. It's here, um, it's staying. <laughs> again, like I said, this is my, this is part of my mission. And the first thing I want to remind people of every time is it is just a tool, it's a tool. Use it as a tool. So Microsoft has, everyone knows ChatGPT. A lot of people know or may not know that Microsoft basically bought ChatGPT. So everything you see, everything you're using with ChatGPT and OpenAI, Microsoft is <laughs> millions of dollars went into this thing. But they also have this thing called Copilot, which is it's actually really, really good as of right now. And I use Copilot. So at my, uh, where I work, the agency that I work at, we use Forms. Are you familiar with Microsoft Forms? It's yes. Kind, yeah. kind of like Google Forms. It's a form. It's an yeah, online yeah, form. Yeah. And we use them for different things. I mean, for like checking in at the receptionist desk and things like that. So with Forms, you want to say, okay, well, when someone fills this form out, I want all the responses. And I want those responses emailed to so-and-so, or I want to alert so-and-so or whatever. So the way forms works is just, you can't just simply capture those responses. You have to go into what's called Power Automate from Microsoft. And you tell Power Automate, hey, when you get these responses, I want the responses to look like this, blah, blah, blah. I want to collect them or even tell it I want them in a graph. I want to put it in a spreadsheet or you want to simply email someone. Well, you have to create what's called a flow. You have to create this flow to get those results that you want, however you want them. Copilot. <laughs> and I bring this up because this just recently happened with uh, one of, so my agency has multiple programs and they're all charitable programs. A new pro a program had 
a need for a specific form for uh, refugees and immigrants, and they wanted these specific responses, but they wanted them emailed to certain specific people, and they also wanted certain graphs, and they wanted to capture statistics and blah, blah, blah. Well, you can do all that through Power Automate. You can go in yourself and set all this up. Sometimes it takes a little trial and error because there's some things you can't do and you have to know the, the, the syntax and blah, blah, blah. Or you can just go to, uh, to Copilot and say, hey, make a flow that captures this, 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 and this. Create this graph, put it in SharePoint, and also email all these people. Now, I've created these flows before, and it can sometimes take about two or three hours. With Copilot, I can do it in five to 10 minutes. So making you more productive. That's the power of AI. It's a tool to assist me to do something quicker so I can get back to the work that I really do. Because that is not my job. <laughs> Although it is my job as the IT director to give people what they need technology-wise. Yeah. But I have greater fish to fry. I have more important <laughs> things to concentrate on. I don't need to be spending three hours creating a flow so that people can capture these results for this form from this form. So I use Copilot instead. And I tell Copilot, hey, this is what these people want. Do it for me. And sure <laughs> enough, it goes, blah, 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 blah. There you go. Put the email addresses in so I know where to send it. And I'm done. 10 minutes. Couldn't think of a perfect way to finish this and a way of reassuring people. AI is not taking your job. <laughs> Before we wrap up, was there anything else, sort of anything major that we didn't hit that you wanted to? Well, do you want to talk about where we think AI is going? Oh, sorry, of course, yes, because that's what I'm going to see. I'm <laughs> I going to start we talking to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. That was my next question. <laughs> so my personal opinion is this is where I think AI, AI is going. So um, a lot of the... Um, the, I always call them the really smart people because they are the really smart people I have talked to and continue to talk to. Uh, they've they've told me about, you know, AI goes in seasons. There's a there's a spring, there's a summer and the winter. AI winters happen all the time. You know, something big will happen. And next thing you know, you're in the winter and it's like eh, back in the doldrums. I think right now with the things that we're seeing, we're pretty much in the summer. The spring was 2023. The spring is when everything's new and popping, right? Everything's yeah, blooming yeah. and everybody's excited yeah. and everything's beautiful. Chat GPT, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, images, images, papers, blah, blah. I think we're getting out of that and we're going into the summer where it's like now everyone's settled in. We know what it is, we know what it does. And then we're going to go into a fall and a winter. And I think that's going to happen probably about mid 2024. I think everything's going to cool off a bit, but in the background, the real work continues. And I think the real future of AI is going to be not all this cute, fluffy stuff that we all like and love, like we talked about image generation and term paper generation or whatever. That's not the future of AI. And I, I know that's probably busting the bubble of a few people, but that's not the future of, a, of AI. The future of AI is the real work, like the medical stuff, the yeah. manufacturing stuff, the space travel stuff. The I think AI is going to help us figure out, even though we already know how to tackle climate change, I think AI is going to help us really build the tools and solutions to actually effectively tackle climate change. That's what I think the real future of AI is. It's not the fun commercial stuff that we love, even though there's a space for that. And there's a lot of people making a lot of money off that stuff from music to, to uh, video editing and even podcast editing. There's AI podcast editing apps yes, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's tons of them and people are making money. Okay, great for them. They're generating money to feed their families. Okay, that's great. But I don't think that's the future of AI. The future of AI is the serious stuff in the background and it continues to develop. Yeah, absolutely. No, really good point in that you've kept making as well as throughout about the, like the subscription model. I mean, yeah, I think in the future, you're going to see a lot more create creativity at home around, especially around the social media. So you're probably going to see next generation of, of TikTok and, and food reviewers that are going to plague my phone screen. 
but I think it will, uh, what's the word? It will encourage that cre creativity at home. But absolutely for me, it's got to be that big, big picture, big ticket items in, in like the medical world. You think of the diseases that we're still struggling with and get it crunching the numbers and the data behind that. Quality assurance on, on certain things should also be a hundred percent then, right? Because you've got the image recognition, it's going to be able to scan, you know, scan stuff. I mean, it's probably already been used for that now, but we shouldn't have any, hopefully any issues with, or yeah, improving what is already being made. So everything that is it'd be more productive and profitable for companies because the, yeah, the, hopefully what right. they're putting out is going to be a hundred percent. I mean, it's that real world application of things that we are struggling with. And and it is funny, isn't it, when we're talking about that? So we're, you know, yeah, we're talking about the medical world, climate change, this and that, and then we've got to talk about Joe Bloggs in in the bedroom making a TikTok video. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love that. I love that. What's the word? The um, yeah, those kind of complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Now I think it's brilliant. All right. I literally just saw a, an app earlier today that helps you create five to thirty second videos. AI based for your really? social media posts. Oh, and it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll give whoever set it up. It's pretty cool. And it, it does everything for you. Like you, all you gotta do is shoot a video of yourself and feed it to this thing. And in about 30 seconds, it gives you the perfect clip with little effects and music and blah, blah, blah. Fine. Capitalism must be capitalism. I get that. I get that. But like I said, I think th that's not, the, that's not the important aspect of AI. And I will make a bold prediction. I was thinking about this earlier when I knew we were going to talk. I was like, what is the boldest prediction that I think that AI can help us with? And I'm going to say it. And it's happened year over year. But I will say, I believe that AI will finally help us not do the work for us, people. Like I said, I want to be clear here. Mm -hmm. I think it will help us finally find the cure to cancer within the next 25 years. I think that's, I think that's a, um, a thing that's going to happen. That's something I can absolutely hope you're right on. If you think about all the data in it, cancer research that has been yeah. gathered over the decades, but it's hard for humans and group of humans to quantify all that data to find um, the the nuances and the differences and the uh, the markers and all of that stuff. What better tool to do that for us in a fast, efficient manner than AI? Yeah, that's and think properly of, fed with the proper models and information. Yeah, and think of where we are at the moment. Yeah. So, so just as as human collective, what we've done. So, you throw AI into the mix, and and like you said, it's it can take all the information from around the world. I mean, as good as we're we're yeah. at, how are we going to collate information from all the countries, all the centers around the world, and and, because, and put it into a centralized view? Because if you think about it, this has always been my opinion. Not with just cancer, with any disease like HIV AIDS. One of the biggest challenges that humans have always faced is we have a problem collaborating, whether it's geopolitical or if it's just not economically feasible. We have these pockets of people gathering different information, but it's not always connected. And I think finding an efficient, cohesive method to collate all of that information within that big blob of stuff that everyone's been collecting, there is the answer and there is the cure. And AI can do that for us because obviously we as people can't do it. You know, people, nations, we're all separated and spread out and whatnot. But if we get an AI, they can just grab it all and, you know, research it and put it all together. I think that's why I say within the next 25 years, it may even happen sooner. I think within the next 25 years, if we do this right, people, if we develop AI correctly and manage it correctly, I think we could finally have the cure for cancer. And it could lead to other cures for like, like I said, like HIV and AIDS. I think 
because we have, I think it's the cures are out there and we already have the answers. We just don't have the information put together yeah. correctly yeah. to formulate yeah. the answer. No. And like, like I said, that, that is a day that I think we all, all can't wait for to, to have that. I mean, you then Absolutely. start thinking all the other chronic illnesses, right? You, you know, that, that it's just accepted now that you're going to have these, these conditions and you just got to treat it. But like you said, and going back to how it's going to assist us, I mean, the thing is, think how long it takes to train, you know, the medical profession up. They'll still be getting trained up to treat, but in the meantime, AI is working on how to assist them with their learning and what they then do when they they are trained up. It's, right, it's, right, it's, yeah. it's working together. It's not a, it's not a, what's the word? It's not a competition or it's not a one exactly. or the other. It's, yeah. it's working using each other but both ai with people for the the data and and people using the output from the the ai i mean yeah medical world absolutely it's going to be interesting to see how that changes in like you said i, I think 25 years let or 10 years let alone 25 years so yeah let's get back yeah. together then 10 years time um <laughs> I'll be, um, let's do the math. I'm not going to do the math. <laughs> no, okay. Look, I, I love, like I said, I love having you on the show. I love coming on Dan. Thanks for having no, thank me. Thank you. <laughs> Our conversations are brilliant. And I, I'm sure tonight, about half hour after we've logged off, a couple of things are going to hit me and I'm going to message oh, you. Oh, me too. And I, know, <laughs> I know we've got, um, like I said, I want to kind of make this thing the semi-regular thing in terms of getting you on and we'll pick something to talk about. But I also do want to get you on for my dinner party episode for something a little different. So. Oh, I, 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 every time I've listened to those, by the way, those are brilliant. I love I every keep. single one of them. <laughs> and I've already come up with a group of people that I would have at the dinner party. I already know what I'm serving. I already know what we're drinking. I already know what we're having for dessert. And I want to take it to another level that I haven't, I don't think I've heard anyone say this. What is the the attire? Did anyone oh, ever okay. talk about the attire? No. <laughs> What's the no, dress code? <laughs> now, I'm sorry for the next upcoming group, but you're, you're now going to be coming up with a dress code as well. But no, I love that, actually. I love that. <laughs> Because otherwise, everyone's showing up in shorts and t-shirts, especially at Matt's party. Be but that's I'm, a party, though. You know, I, I'm I'm for that party too. But I'm just saying, I, um, <laughs> I've got I've got a couple lined up, so I'm going to have to spring that on on them. And I'm actually negotiating with the Wilsons. I'm trying to get the Wilsons. They've had a lot of mentions tonight. I'm actually going to have to ask him for. A, for a they got to come on quickly. Yeah, <laughs> Josh and Amanda, this is your call out. <laughs> I'm negotiating with Josh on that. You'll see the Casting Views recipe book out at the end of 2024 because oh, some of the recipe. I mean, I had yeah. Joe and Kay on recently, and and I was oh, blown away. Yeah, my my first of all, yeah. Every time Jay talks about food, <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, and yes. He and I have the same palate. He and I have the same, um, the 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 same. <laughs> cooking techniques jay i i love my smoker i smoke food all the time i love smoking food smoking meats and finding new recipes learning the ins and outs of how to make things correctly that's my brother me, me and jay are actually related uh i'm just gonna go ahead and put that <laughs> i've got to get you on and maybe i'll do one in the future of the two of you together oh oh yeah <laughs> absolutely I, I do love that series and mainly because every guest has come up with a great menu <laughs> there's been no repetition of guests either and it's it's a way of me just trying to talk to guests and and, and doing something slightly different and getting to understand them because some of the guests that you know that they pick wait did you have sugar coated murder murder on? not yet not yet Oh, you have to get sugar coated murder. I, that's hey, another one. That's another I'm, one. I'm, I'm making the call out right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I'm probably going to have to do because I've had a few people say they like that, and I was doing one a month. I might actually do a month of it. Do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm tempted, or maybe make it a sub weekly. You know, um, every other week, slipping another yeah. episode in. But yeah, yeah. 
I'm all about the food and yeah, the casting views recipe book 2024. Keep an eye out. Look for it. Look for it. Be on the lookout for it in uh, a store near you or an online shop. Ask your yeah, ask your chatbot to find it for it for you. Um, Leo, thank you again. Is there before you go? Is there anything you want to shout out? Because I know you've you've got a number of websites and and music projects. So. Is well, I'm kind of all over the place, on? right? <laughs> so um, really quickly, um, what I'm most proud of at the moment is I just wrapped up doing an audio book. It's the first audio book I ever did. Oh, yes. um, it's a book called Breaking Point by a marvelous, marvelous artist, uh, Carlotta Ardell. And she's actually asked me to come back and continue to record for the series. But um that should be coming out sometime at the first of the year, I believe she said. It was a very fun and unique experience. So I, when she asked me to come back, I said, absolutely, yes, because it was, <laughs> it was a great time doing it. Um, so there's that. And if you are an author and you have an audio, you know, if you have a project to release an audio book, I am on, it's called ACX on Amazon. You can find me there. Just look for Leo J. Allen Jr., I'm available to do audiobooks. Um, there's that. And of course, voluntary input. All the episodes are still out there. Will voluntary input come back? Is always the question that people want an, an answer to. I still have to say, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. No one does. Um, it left quite for some. Yes, it is. You're quite busy. For some pretty. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say here on this show. And a lot of people knew what was going on in my life at that time. It left, it had kind of had to go for some pretty intense things that were going on with, in my life at the time. So it was like, I can't keep doing the pro the podcast right now. So it had to go. Uh, it will, I don't know if it'll come back, but also on the flip side of that quick little secret, I'm kind of have an idea for a new one, a new show. Ooh. Okay. That's totally different. It's an audio fiction, uh, kind of in development. We'll see what, where it goes. There's that. And then, of course, uh, music. I'm still working on music. I have some new music coming out of uh, probably at the first of the year here under Profound Simplicity. Um, you can just Google, go to YouTube and look for youtube.com forward slash at Profound Simplicity. Yeah, the links will be there. The links will yes. be there. But but for the audio stuff, I, I think that's really interesting. And and you know, come on, listen listen to his voice. Who wouldn't want you reading out? You know, reading out the thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll read anything to you or for you. <laughs> I want you to read the recipes out that I'm putting in my book. And then... We can do that. I'll do the recipe, the audio version of the recipe book. It's a oh, it's a deal. We'll do match it. Match made in heaven. <laughs> Leo, thank you again. That's Leo Allen. The links, all the relative links will be in the show notes, so please do check them out. For me, get hold of me, Casting Views across all social media platforms. Email me at castingviewspod at gmail.com if you want to say hi, if you want to suggest an episode, or if you want to be on my dinner party episode, always on the lookout for new food ideas. So get in touch with me. I'll see and dress you next accordingly. Time. I drink dress accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll see you next week. One, two, three, four. If I want your opinion, I will give it to you. Come on, check what we've got, cause you need it. Don't make us get a spark and force feet.